on today's episode. In this video, I'm going to attempt to make a new cowling for this radio control plane, a Corvallis. This is a series of videos where I'm resurrecting a, an abandoned project that I bought. There are a few pieces missing from this plane, but most notably the cowling or fairing for the motor. I normally use Tinkercad for my 3D printer modeling, but in this case I should be using Fusion 360 as it has some unique tools not available in Tinkercad. The first thing I've done is to take some measurements and some photographs taken from the front so that I can work out the shape that it's needed. In Fusion 360 you can take a photo or indeed a scan. I've scanned the front. You can overlay on it your own path to trace out any shape that you like. The measurements are really important as when you import it into Fusion 360 you can apply a scale or calibration factor to get the exact size that you want. Back here where the cowling starts its widest point is six inches that's the measurement I'm going to use for that and then I have the front cowling which is some five and three quarters. Let's go over to Fusion 360 now and I'll show you the imported photo and scan and how I've traced out the shape of the cowling I need. Here in Fusion 360 I've imported a photo of the front of the cowling that I need. What I'm interested in is the outer outline that's clear at the top there but underneath it's the one that's in the in the shadow there. I'll show you how this process is done in a, in a moment. Essentially what we need to do is to create a sketch and the sketch will look like this. This is the outline that I've sketched. If I turn off the background photo you can see it more clearly there. You trace this outline using what's called a fixed point spline and don't worry we'll go through that process in a moment but you should be able to see now how I trace the outline of the cowling that I need. That will make up the first reference point or, or datum if you will. What I'm going to do now is to insert the next picture that I need which is this view here of the front. We need to select the face to put the photograph on and that's going to be on the top. Once we've inserted it we have the option to rotate it, change the size of it, get it up to somewhere nearer what we're going to need. Let's turn off the one in the background. We can change the opacity here. Let's crank that up so I want that to be nice and clear on the outside and to rotate it through 90 degrees. You can see there it's on this vertical axis which is correct. Having got it more or less in the right place you can hit OK. Next we're going to calibrate the size of our image here and to do that we go to the canvas and right click it and hit calibrate. We then choose two points, zoom in a little and I've measured from this point here to this point here and that in reality should be five and three quarter inches. Note that uh, I'm normally working in metric but the sizing of this model is imperial. So in here we want 5.75, 5 and 3 quarters. That's resized it. The next step then will be to trace the outline. For that we're going to need a new sketch. Once again choose which plane we want it on. Clearly it's going to be the same plane as our photograph. And in the sketch now we want to go up and create a spline and it's a fit point spline. Now it's simply a case of tracing out our image. 
this will create a curve between any two points that you choose. And then finally, to close the spline, we hit on the first point that we made. We can now finish that. And we can see the outline that we've made. There's a few bumps in it, but that will suffice for my needs. If we hide the original photo, we can see our sketch there and there is the one behind it. Both of these sketches are currently in the same plane, no pun intended. What I'm going to need to do is to raise this one up by the distance between the two photographs, if you understand me. The next step then will be to create a surface between these two outlines, and we do that using the loft function which is under Create. We need to select our profiles. They are first profile, and that will be our second. And that is all there is to it. We just OK that. We can see our surface. A bit wrinkly, but that's OK. Clearly, and I don't want this to be a solid. The next trick then will be to hollow this out, which we do with the shell function. The thickness that I want is going to be the equivalent of my nozzle size on my printer, which is 0.4 of a millimeter. And that works out to be 0 0.0158 of an inch. That looks okay. And deleting the bottom gives me the shell that I need. I'm doing this before I create the top surface because I want to print this and make sure that it's at least going to fit. What we want to do now then is to export this as an STL file so that I can get it into my 3D print slicing program and go ahead and print it. File export and pull that down and select STL and it's going to download to my local PC. That's going to take a little while. We'll come back when that's downloaded and I'll show you it in my slicing program. I'm using Cura as my slicer of choice and I've made my own profile as I'm using uh, lightweight PLA. I'm only experimenting with this. We will have to see how it turns out. At least it's imported it okay and it looks good in Cura. I always like to double check things using this G-code analyzer. So I've sliced and exported. This is the five millimeter brim that I've created. If we take a look at the 3D model, no surprises there. And as we got the layers, clearly there's just a single wall thickness. Well, time now to be brave and send it to the printer and see what happens. Off we go. Here is the result of the print. See the brim is still attached. Okay, far from perfect, but I'm still practicing with uh, this lightweight PLA. Let's remove this out of brim. Cleaned it up now and just taken a bit of glass paper to the outside there. Any little runs with this lightweight PLA come off really easily. 
so that's not a problem. Now, is it actually going to fit this funny bump here? Probably have to go back and edit that out. That's the bottom. So it's not going on all the way. Let's just let's just check the thickness of the walls here. Point eight. Point eight. It's actually then come out double the thickness that I was wanting. I'm printing with a 0.4mm nozzle and it should come out at 04 If it was half the thickness, would it fit? I'm not sure. I'm going to go back now and do some editing on the file. See if I can take out this bump here. It's not terribly important, but we'll see what we can do. And then I'll print it again and try and get it to the proper thickness and I'll show you the result. I've got pretty much now the result that I wanted. You can see it's fitting all the way around there quite nicely. A little bit of a gap at the bottom, but I'm not too concerned about that. It's close enough for me. What I had to do, I try to tidy up this corner here. It's a little bit better, but I'm no expert in fusion, as you've learned by this point. I also scaled it by an extra, I think, two or three percent just to get that nice interference fit there. And I do have the brim still attached, but I'm not going to bother cleaning that off, as obviously this is just a prototype. Another thing that I will need to do is to provide a, a cutout here for the front steerable nose wheel to go into. The next job will be to work out where the front portion is going to go. I've sat that back inside and I've measured the distance from the top to the centre of the shaft and I've measured the distance from here to a short way in front of the motor bell housing. That's going to be my two reference points to fit the front on. We'll go back into Fusion 360 and see how I'm going to create that next layer, if you will, or sketch. And then once again use the loft function to create some hopefully reasonable looking cowling. I haven't been able to find a direct frontal view of the aircraft. I did, however, find this view, which is looking essentially down the starboard side of the fuselage. What I did then was to first just trace out one side and then using the mirror function uh, duplicated it and produced this shape here. I dimensioned it. The width at the centre is three inches. That's my best guesstimate. We'll see what it looks like. Next thing I need to do is to put it in the correct position in space. My best estimate is that it needs to be 3.65 inches above the first of our sketches. If I reveal those, you can see them there. If you look from the side, this is the one that I spaced up before. I have to do the same trick with our new sketch. There it is. Move the whole thing up by 3.65 inches. Okay. And there we can see them in uh, the three dimensions. The other thing I need to check is the alignment of the centre of this. That needs to be some two inches down from this datum point here. Hide that. So I need to measure from this point to this point. And it's 2.19. You can see over here the distance which is going to be close enough, I think. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, you can see I've added the holes and the, for the ventilation and the prop. Let's see if we can create a new loft. Our first object, and a second, and a third. Ooh, that looks interesting. Okay, what 
but I'm liking the look of that. Let's just turn the sketches off. Uber. Spin it around. As before, at the moment, it's kind of solid. What I want to do again is to use the shell tool and select this surface. It's going to be from the inside and I want the shell. Before I made it too thin, it didn't slice properly, so I'm going to make it 0.04, which is about a millimetre in new money. So apart from losing the holes in the top, I'm not quite sure how that has happened. I think we're pretty much good to go. I'll go ahead and see if I can fix those holes and then hopefully show you a finished product. Well, who is this smart chap sporting his new rhinoplasty? It's come out rather well, I think. I did make rather a cock up on the position of the centre hole. It should have been further up, but that will work for me. A little bit of filler when I prepare it and paint it, and nobody will ever know. You can see the fit around the top there, and around the side, and I've just hand cut out the little piece at the bottom. When I printed this, I started with this on the bed and it printed upwards. I really didn't want it to get this far into the print, which is like six hours or so, and then for it to foul up because I'd put a notch in it. So I just hand cut that. But there we go. I'm sure the Fusion 360 experts out there will be cringing at the way that I did this. However, it works for me. Now I can get on and do the rest of the build on this plane and hopefully get it in the air in the next week or so. Many thanks for watching.